Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of April 11th. And a big shout out of thank you to all of you who are supporting us here at Wild at Heart. We are a nonprofit. We're a crowdfunded operation. And we're just so grateful as you do that month to month, week to week, through the year, you help us keep the lights on and, and keep bringing this message out all across the world. So you can do that on the Wild at Heart app. You can support us on our website. Really easy to do. And we're super grateful. Now, last week, we aired a treat. We <laughs> did not tell my publisher, but we aired an audio excerpt from the audiobook recording that I had just done in the studio of a new book I have coming out in June called Resilient. Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. So if you haven't heard that, you need to go in your podcast feed and go back and listen to that one first, because this is sort of part two. This week, I've asked Stace, my wife, and our friend Gloria Winters to come in and just talk some more about the kind of prayer that we were doing last week together and that I led everybody through at the end of the podcast last week, like learning to drop in, learning to tune in, finding Jesus within us. So thanks for having us. Yeah. Yes, I am so glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming in. I think for many people, certainly for me, was very new for many years, the idea that um, sometimes we do pray to the Lord in the heavens, to, to our God enthroned above, and sometimes we are talking to Jesus, who is right by our side, you know, as we're driving down the road or as we're in a hospital room or, you know, Christ with us. But the kind of prayer we're talking about now is tuning into the presence of God within us, his kingdom within us. And as we tap into Jesus there, the things he's able to say, the things he's able to show us, I call it the prayer of descent, and by that I mean it's learning to shut out the world around you, the chaos, the noise, the crazy, calm down, tune in to the presence of God who lives within us, Ephesians 3, Christ lives within us. And from that place, beautiful things take place. And I know this has been really rich for you over the years. But the first thing I think I want to ask you is, how has it been helpful? And that is such a good question. How has it been helpful like in every way? Because as you said, Christ lives within us. We've talked a lot about how when we pray, we're not shouting. We don't have to be shouting to God. He's not the God way up there, but he lives within us. So becoming aware of his presence within me has profoundly increased my awareness of the intimacy that I have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is closer than my breath, closer than my skin, he's living within me. So practicing this kind of prayer, it just, it transforms everything, really. It does. Yeah, and it reminds me, Psalms 107, 9, that says, He alone can satisfy the longings of my soul. Mm -hmm. And I think that encapsulates what it is to me. It's my life source. It's, it's the river. It's the fire. It's what makes me burn. It, and it's what gives me strength to live day to day. Yes, that's so good. My experience has been, I'm curious if this is true for you, that he has been increasing the invitation to come into the intimacy, to come into the life source, to come in for nourishment more in the last couple of years than ever. I think it's because of the crazy. I think it's because of the pressure and the times that we're living in. But this invitation to draw from, oh, like an inner strength, mm -hmm. love, and then the, just the beauty of, of what encounters with Jesus can bring us from day to day. It's been right. really, really refreshing to my soul. Yes. I love what you said to Gloria about the fire, tapping into the fire, like the passion, the desire, the fuel to live life. And um, even this morning, John, I was had time set apart to have time with God, but my mind started going mm. into the crazy. And I really heard in my spirit, come to me. Mm -hmm. 
Right, right. I need to come to you. And what's available in coming to Jesus, coming into him in my inmost being, is life. Mm -hmm. And what's available, it, it seems that it's an expansion of what it was before. Speaking to that inner intimacy has place for ever increasing expansion. And although I've always known that intuitively, now I'm experiencing it. Yeah. So gang, um, there's more and we want to, we want to invite you into it. I hope last week's podcast was at least kind of a, an introduction and an understanding quoting saints like Theophan, the recluse saying, we must descend with the mind into the heart and there stand before Jesus. So in other words, we give our attention, our mental life, we pull within and drop down into our heart where Christ lives. We tune into our inner life. And in the early days, for me, it, it was simply to hear his voice. And, and I don't mean like simply as in that's not a big deal. It's life-saving. I mean, just to hear God say your name oh. is so wonderful. It can be enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. It can be enough. But in the early days, for me, as I was learning, you know, I was shifting my prayers from the God who is up in the heavens to the God who does reside within those who open their lives to him. God within me, Ephesians 3, Christ within me. My early experiences were mostly very simple. It was just, wow, I'd feel a moment of comfort or I would feel a moment of love or, I, you know, Christ would say something I really needed to hear in that moment. Hey, let it go, John. Oh, yeah. Let it go. Or, you know, She's going to be okay. I would just hear these phrases yeah, these from Jesus. Yeah, vital things. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and for many years, that was enough. Yes. Like that. What were your early experiences of tuning in, dropping in to encounter Jesus within? The beginning was what you are saying, and that's also true still. Yes. That I just need to hear from him, and and I love that. I love that conversational intimacy. but. Beginning to practice descending, going into my inner being where Christ dwells, my first experience was beautiful, and it was becoming aware of his presence within me, just turning my attention mm. intentionally, and sometimes I'll even look down, becoming aware of his presence. And what I would feel is the warmth of his embrace. Mm. I wouldn't see anything, but I would feel his love. I can feel it now just telling mm. you about it, like like a warmth in my chest. Mm. Yeah. My early experience, I it, it was initiated maybe with more of a sense of duty and obligation and religious overtones. And so it was really an intentional shift to that descending place mm -hmm. and to that, um, as Psalms 45 says, where you incline your ear, you turn your attention, you turn your face. Mm. And, and then pressing into his place of love, his place of um, understanding his promises that his presence is before me, behind me, beneath me, around me. And that, I think, was a significant shift in being able to go from something that was, oh, need to do my quiet time, need to do my time with God, to really sitting into his presence. And I remember very specifically, he would just say, just show up just show up. Mm. I'll do the rest. And that, from a, a person that um, likes to get things done and be efficient and have a way of doing things, uh -huh. was such a good release to just show up. And if you do that, I take the rest over. And I have found that to be so true in ever-increasing measure. I love that. I love that. Just show up. He's here. He is here. His kingdom is here. And as we're chatting, I'm realizing, I think for me, the big entryway into this was actually an inner healing prayer. You know, we would find a wound. I would have a traumatic memory and, and we would invite yes. Christ into that place, mm -hmm. you know, come into my sense of belonging where I don't feel like I belong because of this particular story or come into 
yeah, you know, my hopes and dreams because I don't feel I can dream right now because mm-hmm. of disappointment and heartache. Inviting Christ into different places in us in healing yes. prayer and then seeing him and being like, wait, what? And What's I, available? Yes, mm-hmm. and I would see like eight-year-old me and and then I would see Jesus come mm-hmm. in, you know, like to my bedroom or to the playground and we've had now thousands of those experiences leading other people through, you know, inner healing prayer where you go, oh, wait a second. All time and space is available to right. Jesus, mm-hmm. right. right? Every part of our story, every part of our past, all of that is, is completely available to the eternal God. None of it is lost to him or inaccessible so that began to open up, well, wait a second, I want to tune into you more frequently. Yes. Not just in a, you know, a unique moment at a retreat or in a counseling session. Like, I, I want more of that. Absolutely. And what I love, John, is that God wants more of that. Having him say, just show up and having him say to me, come to me. Like, he, he wants that, which really helps. We're not on our own yes. going, I really want this with you, God. I really want to see you, encounter you. He's like, come on. Yeah. And we, yeah. don't have to, we don't have to find him. He's there. We seek him. We show up. We drop in. And we trust his goodness. And he's always there. Yes. So recently, what's been going on? What have you and Jesus been up to? You want you you want the big story? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, it's super fun, um, and and this is uh, this is living in the intimacy with Jesus is exciting and it's um, it's it's intense and has um, so much color and life to it. So I, I think I just want to preface it with that that it's um, it's not just to go into it, again out of duty and obligation and um, uh, out of oh I must spend time with Jesus. It, it's just life giving. So um, so daily Jesus and I just uh, we go to different places together. Um, and one of the recent ones was every single time I would meet with him, we'd be in a field of wildflowers. And oh, I love that. Um, we'd be actually lying. There's there's a, a place in. Um, Maroon Bell Pass in Colorado that's just gorgeous with millions and millions of wildflowers for days. And it, it looks something similar to that. But we're we're laying in this field of wildflowers, looking up at the sky, and um, he's pointing out these clouds that look like waves. And there's um, so much to that in, in our story as we've walked with Wild at Heart and, and understanding um, that the wave is coming. And so I just, you know, kind of am in awe at what he's pointing out. And then he kind of turns next to me and, and looks at me and he, he gets excited in his eyes and he, he jumps up and he looks down at me and he, he puts his hand out and he says, are you ready? And I say, I'm ready. And, and I jump up. And so that, that awesome experience with Jesus had been occurring day after day after day for wow. weeks. And I was just loving mm. being in those moments with him and fully satisfied. Yeah. And then... Okay, wait. Before you go okay. on, I want you to help folks. So where are you? It, where's your prayer place in your house? What What do you do? It's in my bedroom. Okay. With the door closed. Okay. So you've got some quiet. Mm-hmm. All right. And are you like closing your eyes? Are you? How are you finding Jesus in this field of wildflowers? Like yeah. how does that happen as you begin to pray? Yeah, it, it's, it, it's not jumping to it immediately. It's taking a moment to really um, consecrate my time with God. Um, It's understanding, again, as I said, that he just says, show up. Um, It's submitting my body, mind, and my spirit. It's releasing, as you call it, John, um, the shallows and the midlands. And that language has actually been super helpful because you can start going through all the categories and now you're off on a rabbit trail because you're distracted about all yes. the midlands and all the shallows. And so just saying, Jesus, I, I submit to you the shallows and the midlands and I, I give them to you. And, and then there's a huge piece that I've been learning of just humility of heart, mm-hmm. humility of soul, of body, and recognizing that um, what he did by coming to the cradle going to the cross, going to the grave, 
the ultimate humility that that took when I come into that place, like presence, presence is there. And so those are steps that I take regularly to just drop into that place and then just saying, okay, now Jesus, bring the kingdom, right? Mm. And then when I say like bring the kingdom, it, the expansiveness is just, there it is. Um, and, and then we get to play in this place. <laughs> okay. So we had you going to the same field, mm-hmm. wildflowers, for weeks? For weeks. Okay. And then he says, are you ready? Are you ready? And, I, and he puts his hand out. And I grab his hand and say, I'm ready. And so we stayed there for weeks. And I was happy. And then one day he said, you should probably ask if there's more. <laughs> Right, because you're, you know, you're so overwhelmed with the fact that you're living in this kingdom moment with your Jesus, and he's he's seeing you, and he's making eye contact with you, and you're you're being filled up with his presence and his beauty, and um, that you just are good staying there. Yes. Um, but when I said, "Is there more?" He got this gleam in his eye, and he kind of starts to walk away a little bit, and he he looks back at me, and it was uh, it's so particular to a scene that's in the very end of the Lord of the Rings when Galadriel is getting on the ship at the end of the age, and he she just turns around and she has this look in her eyes, and that was the look that he gave me, and I say I'm ready, and he says come and see. Mm. So I grab his hand and we we walk over the hill of these wildflowers and there's his horse. And I'm like, really? <laughs> really, really? Like, you know, fairy tale? Yes, fairy tale. So we get on his horse and then it, he starts going around to all of the saints. And if you remember now in um, Chronicles of Narnia, C.S. Lewis, yeah. um, when Aslan goes with the girls and starts blowing on all of um, the 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 frozen saints, if you will, mm. and they come alive for the battle. And that's what we were doing. And wow. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up, no, can you? I don't no. think you can. And so we're going around um, waking up the saints, gathering them in. And at the same time, then we ex- actually zoom out to a picture of the whole earth. And there's this very crazy black veil spider web thing that's being pulled off of the earth. And then we zoom back in and we're we're waking up the saints and we're gathering them together. And then we zoom back out and we see this crazy black veil thing being pulled off the earth. And um, so that's where we've been now in that full piece. So we start at the beginning, we go through that, and we're we're um we're doing that day to day together. And I haven't yet asked if there's more. I think that there is, but I, I've been just um beautifully stuck in that place. Yeah. So mm. yeah. yeah. And, and Gloria, what is the effect uh, of that sort of time with Jesus? Yeah, and I, I, I hope you can even hear it in my voice because it's joy it's and it's so life. Joy and, and your face is just lit up. <laughs> and it's excitement and it's, it's, um, it's a, a good disbelief of like, oh, I can be in this place in the kingdom. And there's a difference between when you go into the sanctification of your imagination to, um, to experience Jesus Versus into these live places with him, um, and and that's been um, a beautiful wrecking of my soul, and a, a beautiful um, even just daily healing of being able to then walk in this life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to run with that idea for a minute because we're folks. What we're not describing is imagination. Right. We are simply describing the rest of reality. The rest of reality. We live in two worlds. We are amphibians, right? We live in a physical world with, you know, cars and stop signs and homework and all that stuff around us, dinner to make. There's a physical world. But right here in the midst of this physical world is the rest of the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. It's not other. It, you know, this world is part of the kingdom of God as well, but it is the rest of the kingdom of God. The saints are there. The angels are there, right? The Trinity is there. And Eden is there. Jesus says to the thief, today you will be with me in paradise. You know, it's the paradise of God. It's the Eden of God. So the kingdom of God is simply the rest of reality. And while we can have imaginative experiences with Jesus, what we are describing is God opening our hearts up to the rest of reality, to see Jesus doing things, saying things, encountering us, and there's a funny way this began to open up for me. I was just realizing it during this podcast. 
I'm a Shakespeare guy. I had this dream at one point in my life that I was going to go to the Royal Shakespeare Academy in, in London and be a Shakespearean actor. So I'm pretty saturated with a lot of his plays within me. And the, he has this phrase where um, there's a line that goes, man's heart is a kingdom. And after I become a Christian, I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. Is that true, God? Like, could could it be that expansive? Because I think I've pictured the realm of my heart as being fairly... Kind of small. Yeah, kind of small, mm. you know, kind of local, uh-huh. like a taco shop. <laughs> No, like a kingdom. Yeah. And, the, and then Jesus said, just ask me to show you. Ask me to show you. And so it, as I've learned to shut out the chaos of the world, and for me, Gloria, that piece of benevolent detachment is really big. Like I, that entering into prayer, I just go, I give everything to you. I give everything. to I give the day to you. I give all the stuff I've already forgotten to do to you. It's just that beautiful release. It allows me to tune in his presence. And then the invitation from Jesus been, now come deeper. Now yes. mm-hmm. follow me mm-hmm. where we're going today. Yeah. And again, sometimes it's just words of love or counsel, but sometimes it is encounters like that in the rest of the kingdom of God, not just in a sanctified imagination. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think um, for me, though, practicing prayer with sanctified imagination kind of helped the usher this in mm. for me to be able to see in my spirit. Mm-hmm. So what I would do is pray and consecrate my imagination, consecrate the theater of my mind. Yes. Cleanse it with the blood of Jesus from other things that I had seen or read yes. or imagined. Yes. And then with that offering to Christ, ask to see him. But but I've just grown in it, so I don't know where the line crossed over from imagination to reality. But I do want to say, because I'm in awe of your experience, Gloria, and it's just so beautiful, and I'm struck with two things. And one of them is that you can go back. Mm-hmm. You can always go back, which is so cool. And then the other thing is we are sharing stories of something that we've been practicing for years, years, and it grows. It continues to grow. So there's so much hope. If you've never done this, Jesus wants this with you. If you've been doing it for a while, there's more, you know, for us to look at each other and go, what's next? What's more? I really more? like that. If what your experience has been so far, which was like mine for years of just hearing mm-hmm. the voice of God within us, you know, we don't hear it audibly like you're hearing this podcast. You hear it within your heart. Yes. That's where it dwells. That's beautiful. Ask him to show you things. Ask him to open your vision as well as your hearing, right? Right. And and if you have perhaps had the joy of seeing some things, pictures, visions, whatever you want to call that, Jesus has shown you things, then maybe the next step is, where are we going, Mm -hmm. Lord? Because you weren't just seeing a field of wildflowers. You were in it. In it. With Jesus. And he waited for me to ask questions. So there was an engagement that was necessary to walk with him in that. And I'd say as a precursor to that, even in entering in, I I think in the hearing from God places and beauty and creation is a huge component for me and mm. um, being able to um, hear well from Jesus and walk with him. Um, but, but I think the word he gave me was freedom, mm. to have freedom with him and releasing from so much of the religious spirit that just as in our, our, actually it's in the shallows and it's in, it's in the Midlands, right? So releasing that yeah. component in mm-hmm. order to have freedom with him. And I had found freedom regularly in creation with him to hear his voice yes. and to see him. Yes. And then now it was diving deep into me to actually experience that with him in the kingdom. So beautiful. Um, I'll share, I'll share something from today. So it's so beautiful, you guys, even sharing from today. This is, this is an offering. This is something so intimate that we're sharing mm, with is. Jesus. It is. And it's offered in love and with the belief that God has more for all of us. So for me today, um, what it means is going into a comfortable place with the door closed. I need to know that John isn't going to be coming in any moment. Like this is a, this is a secret, safe place that I meet with God. 
And today it involved uh, putting on like some worship music, but without words, just the soaking music in the background. And then um, having a time of prayer, prayer into my day. And particularly today was prayer over someone else and then time in the word. And then, and then I could feel my mind going up to the details and, you know, what back into the dinner. shallows, back to the yeah. shallows. Yeah. And that's when I heard him say, come to me. I'm like, oh, oh yes. So I became aware. Uh, I closed my eyes, kind of turned my head down, become aware of his presence within me. And for me, the way I access the kingdom within is I imagine a garden gate, uh, a door within my heart, the Revelations 3.20, where Jesus is on the other hand knocking, you know, on the other side, open the door and I'll come in and sup with you. I'll be intimate with you. And um, I picture the handle. I picture the door. It's stunning. It's covered with growing roses. And, and then when I open the door, Jesus is standing there. Now, for me, I have yet to see his face clearly. I haven't, that's something I'm asking for. I haven't done that yet. Um, but he extended his arm and he took me out into what is the garden of my heart, which may be Eden. Um, and it is a place we visit a lot. So it's also expanding. Every time I go in, there might be something new and something else he wants to show me. But today, um, I, I was weary I had a good time of prayer, a good time of worship, but my heart was still weary from the cares of, of life and the demands of life. And so he led me over to what is in my garden is what I call, it's a hope, the tree of hope. It's glorious. It's so big. There's a river nearby that's flowing that you can hear, but there's indentations in the tree so that we're both sitting against it, but it's really comfortable. It's not like a pokey tree. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's velvet cushions. I don't know, but it's really soft and comfortable and just leaning against it. I'm, I'm already being refreshed. But then today he put out his hand, his nail scarred hands and took mine. So we sat there like that for quite a while. And that was, um, that would have been enough, but then there was more. And knowing the state of my heart, this has never happened before you guys, but he put his hand on my heart and prayed for me. Oh. Now, I know Jesus intercedes for us. He intercedes for us day and night, but he put his hand on my heart and in the natural, I could feel, mm -hmm. I could feel just something like hot or power or just my body reacting to the incredible honor of it. And then I had just prayed for the fire love of God, for the passionate zeal. He just, in, without saying a word to me, like only Jesus can do, he conveyed in that moment that my love for him, which flows as a response to his love for me, that's where the drive of my life comes from. That's the answer, not my getting up earlier and having more time with God or making sure I exercise or what are you eating and blah, 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 you know, the list. But no, it's the fiery zeal as a response to his love that is the fuel mm -hmm. for my life. And um, that actually isn't the end, but the rest is just for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm really grateful for both of you because these are sacred stories. These are really, really precious mm -hmm. stories. And the reason that we're sharing them, gang, is to invite you into more. Wherever you are in your journey of becoming aware of the presence of Jesus within you, letting him speak to you, touch you, show you things, there's more. And it can grow and it can deepen. And I, the the heart of the heart of the why we're sharing this is I think we need it for this hour. Yes. I, you know, the idea of blowing on the saints, his breath on the saints uh. that you were seeing. The saints are weary mm -hmm. and running on very little oil. And this is why for me, this really ramped up during the pandemic and especially during the quarantines, right? I mean, we're <laughs> like yeah. literally stuck at home. And it was an opportunity to go, oh, I need your kingdom. Like I thrive on adventure. I thrive on it. Adventure in nature. 
anything. Take me anywhere. Anything. Bicycling, rafting, <laughs> walking. Get outside. Get me outside. <laughs> I'm with you. <ya. laughs> so Jesus began to do that for me during the quarantines. Mm. And it was so immensely kind. He knew I was trapped. He knew I had cabin fever. I was climbing the walls. And so he would invite me to go places with him and to back up a little bit. So Craig used to have this. And Craig would describe these pictures that he was having from Jesus. And Mm. and I'm like, Lord, I hear your voice. I hear your voice. I do. But I don't see much from you. I don't see the kingdom. I don't... And one day, I'm driving down the road, and he says, you have not because you ask not. Mm. He says, you just haven't asked. I'm like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's it? That's the—I just thought I was sort of crippled spiritually, you know, like I'm the guy (laughs) that just doesn't get it. Yeah. So I began to ask, as I was writing the book, All Things New, Mm. I said, Jesus, I want to see the kingdom, and I want to see the new earth. And he's like, gladly. Wow. Mm. And one of the first things he showed me just took me. Suddenly, we were at the ocean. We were on the ocean in a great sailing ship. And I'm like, there's the ocean? You know, because in that passage of Revelation 21, I saw no more sea, which if you understand John's use of the Old Testament and what all those references means, it's the chaos agent. It doesn't mean there is no ocean, okay? You get the ocean back, the restored earth. But I needed to see it. I needed to experience it. And he, he he let me go there. He let me do that. And then recently, it's been a number of other things. I, I will sometimes ask him, Lord, I want to see what you're doing in the world. Mm. And I have seen the most beautiful things. He showed me that Jesus is personally introducing himself to millions of people on the earth right oh, now. Praise him. And and he showed me that. And then we started hearing the stories, right? you know, the, yeah. the book, A Wind in the House of Islam. Uh, if you haven't read that book, it's a fascinating account of the number of conversions of people in Muslim countries that are coming out of direct encounters with Jesus. He is walking into their dreams at night and introducing himself, or he's literally walking into the room. And that's what I saw that he had showed me. I am, inter- I am personally introducing myself to millions of people. And then we started hearing it out of the occult, that thousands of people are coming out of the occult in the same exact way, that they are encountering Jesus. And so, like, how encouraging oh, mm-hmm. yes. to see mm-hmm. what he's Wait, doing in the world. you don't see that world. on the news, right? You don't hear yeah. about that <laughs> when you go on your, yeah. And that's what's real. That's happening. Yes. And so as we've cultivated this, I love it that you said, come, come with me or come and see. Oh, okay. come, and, come see. and see, come with me. Oh. Now it's gotten so brief with me because, because this is, this is like any other skill. It's like learning to ride a bike, learning to play an instrument. You, you kind of get the hang of it. Yeah. And then as you get the hang of it, some really beautiful things can happen. So now all he has to say is come, come. Mm. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. I mean, instantly it means I give you my total attention. I ignore the chaos and distractions of life right now mm. and of the shallows in my existence. And I drop through the cares of life and the midlands. I just let all that go. You have my full intention. And I, just the nourishment mm. of this kind of prayer, the prayer of descent or you know, inner healing prayer or centering prayer encounters with the living God, (laughs) encounters with the living God. And sometimes it's Jesus. Most of the time it's Jesus for me. Sometimes it's our father Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's really cool, gang. We're all three. That's a fun one. (laughs) Okay. And I know folks are just dying going, wait, what? But earlier in this year, we did a series on opening up your life to the Holy Spirit more and how we actually are created to enjoy a unique relationship with our Father, with our Jesus, and with Holy Spirit. And that is a very beautiful growth thing. Again, no shame, no condemnation if this hasn't been your spiritual experience. And I appreciate you, Gloria, saying that 
coming out of a pretty religious duty oriented thing for you, you had to get out of a lot of obligation. Right. And what, I guess what a typical quiet time is. Right. And the pressure to do it right. Yep. The discipline. Ah, there's the word. Right. And, uh, and instead removing that and putting in freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Now here's the really fun thing is you can ask God to confirm an experience with him. He will take you into something. He'll say something to you. You'll feel his love. He'll show you something. Maybe you find yourself at the ocean. Maybe you are in the mountains. And you come out of it, and there is part of you going, was that just me? You know, like, it's so wonderful, but was that just me? And I I will ask God, especially in, like, the important stuff, like if he said something very, very weighty or showed me something very significant in the world, I will ask for confirmation. Or he'll just do it. What do you mean he'll just do it? He'll just do it. So here's my story. So we are a bow hunting culture here at Wild at Heart. Most of the guys on the staff, we have to plan our conference schedule around (laughs) September in Colorado because it's bow hunting season. And one of our questions has been, yeah, but, you know, they shall neither kill nor harm on my holy mountain. And, you know... No hunter likes the actual act of taking a life. It's a very serious thing. It's a very sober thing. And we treat it as very sacred. We pray over it, et cetera. But we do wonder, like, so what are adventures like then in the kingdom of God, in the new earth? So fairly recently, um, Jesus said, come. Hmm. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Close the door, drop in give you my absolute attention, let go of everything. And sometimes I will do is that. Stace, I'll put on some music mm-hmm. that kind of just tell, just instrumental quiet. And boom, we are in the woods. And it's the father and I are walking in the woods. Now, that has happened before, um, but he's carrying a bow. He's carrying a long bow. And I'm like, wait, what? And I just, I kept pulling out of the experience. I'm like, whoop, back to the shallows. I'm like, no, that, that no. This can't be real. Yeah. I'm making this up. Every time the Holy Spirit took me back into it, I was right behind the Father still. We're further into the woods on the same exact trail. He's walking like he has a bow. I look down. I have a bow. Anyway, we go hunting, gang. And it's very sacred. And it would take too long to describe the thing. But I'm in the woods. I'm with the Father. We have bows. We're bow hunting. I come out of that. And I'm like, that is just wild. Well, that is wild. That is way beyond my understanding of the kingdom. And I walk out to the kitchen, and someone had sent me a package. I open the package up in the mail. It's just right there on the counter. And it is a book about archery hunting. (laughs) Okay, not not only that, the illustration on the cover of the book, and if you're listening to this podcast right now, thank you so much for sending that to me. The illustration is literally the longbow <laughs> that we were using. Okay. It, no, no. It gets more than that. What? I opened the book up, and he had stuck a feather in the book, <laughs> which is the fletching. When you're making, like, primitive gear, you use not plastic. You use actual, you know, feathers for the fletching on the arrow. It was the same fletching what? as was on our arrows in the kingdom. And I'm like, I believe you. I believe you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I believe I believe you. I believe like it was so holy oh. and intimate and playful and kind. And personal. And personal. And and that was a little hard, like, yeah, walking in the woods with the father, sure. Like that's right out of Genesis, you know, the garden. Okay, wait. But bow hunting, like, wait, what? I'm not sure. Da da da, you know. And then he's like, Yes, yes, yeah, right down to the fletching Mm. was the same color texture so i'm sharing that to say it's okay to ask for confirmation it's actually a good thing and the other thing that i've been struck by and aware of what listeners may be feeling i'm sure that there are some that are like i want that Mm -hmm. that's out of reach for me um, that's actually a good beginning mm-hmm. to ache for it, to long for it. That makes you ask. And the ache, that is the doorway to union with Christ. 
That's the doorway that you're going to open mm. in order to have this. So um, it's a good thing. I, I bless that if that is you, because we're we're all three sitting here going, yeah, I want more. more. I want a confirmation like that. I mean, come on. Just, just the hunger like is that. holy. Yeah, the hunger is holy. Yes. Yeah. He wants us to long for him. One more uh, additional confirmation. So I was having those experiences and just loving sitting in that day to day. And then next thing I know, John texts me one of his experiences that had some similarities to it. And I went, okay, Jesus. Like, I mean, just— Oh, his... Jesus had literally—and I didn't know anything about your story no, at none. all. I hadn't heard any of that. And Jesus, I was in an, an experience with Jesus where he said, are you ready? <laughs> and I said, I'm ready. <laughs> and I sent that to you. And you flipped. I flipped. I flipped because it it was just such a, and I don't know that I had even asked for confirmation, but there's somewhere in your mind, not in my heart, but in my mind that was like, really, really, are we really going here every single day? And then here John texts us to me oh, and I so just, beautiful. I texted back, I, I really have no words <laughs> because I didn't want to share in that moment. It felt like it was um, too holy yes. to just do an emoji back, right? So I, I ended up calling him later and just say, you got to listen to this. Yes. Um, and just the beauty of that. I mean, his sense of humor, uh, his the way that he, he writes our name on his hand and he puts it on our heart, Stacy, yes. just for you, just yes. this morning because yes. you needed it. Yeah. It it just undoes me. Yeah. Okay, gang. Um, let's go there, everybody. Last week at the end of the chapter that I was reading in the audiobook, I took you into an exercise of the prayer of descent. And we're gonna go there again with some music to help you and asking the Holy Spirit, uh, to guide us. Let's give it a try, gang. You only learn by trying. You only grow in this by practicing. Here we go. Jesus, I long for your presence. I long for your presence, Lord. Help me commune with you where you live inside of me. Repeat that several times over. Repetition is really helpful in this kind of prayer. I'll repeat things over and over as I tune in. So Jesus, I long for your presence, Lord. Help me commune with you where you live inside of me. As you quiet yourself, practice benevolent detachment. Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you, God. I give everyone and everything to you. Repeat it a few times. Name things you need to release. And if something in particular keeps trying to distract you, specifically give the issue over to God. I give you my children, my work, that email. Take a moment and release. What we're doing is we're just ignoring the shallows right now. And we keep tuning into Jesus who lives within us. We ask the Holy Spirit for his help. Holy Spirit, help me to descend. Help me locate Christ in me. Help me follow Christ down into the depths of my being. I pray to commune with you there. Begin loving Jesus or your Father or the Holy Spirit within you, not looking to the Lord above, not even to Christ by your side, but looking within. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you. Just settle in, knowing that you're taking this all slowly. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. 
And as you do this, just become aware of the presence of Jesus within you. I love you, Lord. I give you everything. I just need you. I want you. Release the world. Holy Spirit, help me to give my attention to the presence of God in my inmost being. And as you become aware of Jesus within you, follow him deeper within. Be open to what he wants to do. It might be comfort. It might be a word from God. He might want to show you something. Let him take the lead. This is not a time for typical prayer. Don't start praying for the cares that you hold up in the Midlands. Don't intercede for others. This precious time is dedicated to one thing only, communion with God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. What are you saying? What are you showing? Give me eyes to see and ears to hear. I love you here. And as we linger there, we ask God, for his glorious strength. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill the depths of my being with your glory. Fill me with your glory, Lord. Fill me with the river of life in my inmost being. Let the river flow in. Give me the strength that prevails, Lord. Fill me with your glorious strength, Father. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my mind. Strengthen love in me. Strengthen hope in me. Strengthen faith in me. I pray for your resilience, God throughout my being. And I love you here. I love you here. I love you here. 